Well, 50 years ago, on Raven's Progressive Matrices, which is an ideal test to compare the genders because it's nonverbal and women have a slight verbal advantage perhaps. But on that test I found excellent samples, standardization samples for five countries. And modern women in every one of those countries either equaled or slightly exceeded males. They were Australia, New Zealand, Estonia, Argentina, and white South Africa. Australia, setting men at 100, women were perhaps at 99.5, but in the others they all ranged from 100.5 to 101.5. Now the interesting thing is the sixth country. I had military data for Israel. And Israel showed women behind men. And it was entirely because 20% of Israeli women are highly orthodox and are kept from interfacing with the modern world. They're not even allowed to read the Torah. And they pulled the Israeli female average down two points. So they're the exception that proves the rule. Where women have modern education and a range of cognitively demanding professions open to them, today they're matching men. Well, the most interesting thing about IQ trends is not just that we're getting better at IQ tests, but what they do tell us about social tendencies. For example, I've looked at the vocabulary scale of the WISC test and the WAIS for adults. And over the last 50 years in the U.S., adults have gained 17.4 points on vocabulary and their children only four. Now that's very puzzling because adults normally socialize their teenage children into their own speech community. And they were doing it in 1950. Their kids could not only understand them but use the adult vocabulary. Today they can understand it and can't use it. Now that tells us something about the development of teenage subculture. In 1950 the word teenager didn't exist. And here you've got a subculture which has developed with its own dress, its own language, its own spending power, and it's become inward looking. Uh, as I say, it's become resistant to the adult speech community that would be its normal focus. Our brains are not any greater potential at conception, but we exercise them differently. Just as a swimmer will have different muscles than a weightlifter, we exercise the portions of our brains that have to do with rote memory less, and we take abstract concepts and the use of logic on relationships more seriously. So, uh, they were not feeble-minded. We can attack a wider range of cognitive problems. Where we attach the word intelligence is less important than understanding what's happened.